evening to all of you and and uh, today uh, would be the last <coughs> theory class of this particular uh, course uh, here uh, we, uh, till now uh, we have learned uh, how to detect uh, faults in uh, structural faults basically we uh, focused on structural uh, faults uh, in various circuits and then uh, we also uh, saw uh, how to have uh, built in tests okay so that was essentially these were the two concepts in the entire course and towards the end uh, today we are going to see uh, how uh, circuits you know, uh, faults are going to be there right we can't avoid that but in critical circuits you know, how can uh, we have uh, we can uh, redesign the circuit uh, so that even if there is an uh, fault uh, still you know, uh, the functionality is not you know, uh, disturbed or hampered okay so uh, so first and uh, foremost once you uh, make a system right and uh, now we are not uh, talking about a uh, uh, post uh, fabrication checks okay uh, we are now going to focus on uh, uh, a chip has been fabricated and uh, uh, post fabrication checks has already been done you know by all the testing techniques which we learned everything but now uh, that chip has gone out and and now it's in the uh, uh, with the consumer right so every day you uh, know uh, when the consumer is uh, uh, using it uh, some checks uh, needs to be done in the background uh, and then uh, if there is a fault detected then uh, uh, then can we do something so that uh, the uh, the functionality or, uh, which is required by the, the customer uh, is still met okay uh, so towards that so now so there is a requirement of continuously monitoring uh, if there is a uh, fault or not okay so they can be uh, detected by uh, many ways right so uh, uh, there are uh, three uh, important <coughs> concepts out here okay uh, for error detection okay uh, they are the ones which are generally uh, used so we'll see uh, each one of them uh, in detail uh, one is known as the uh, physical method of error detection the other is known as temporal and the third is known as the uh, information okay so uh, suppose there is a, a module out here right so uh, instead of making a uh, one module uh, you uh, duplicate the module okay uh, so there will be uh, two modules uh, doing the same function okay uh, and and module uh, output from one module uh, no, uh, is, is uh, the primary output and and the same input is given parallelly to one more uh, module uh, and you have a comparator and and the now outputs are compared out here and and if there is an error we come to know okay that there is an uh, error okay because if these two answers are not exactly the uh, same yeah uh, sorry so uh, uh, so there are uh, two modules and and comparator and there is an uh, error right? so uh, this is uh, uh, an exceptional error detection uh, techniques so it can uh, various kinds of you know, errors it can uh, detect okay so uh, what are the drawbacks can anybody say what is the drawback of having a system like this you have two modules running parallelly duplicacy duplicacy means double yes. uh, item and plus yes. compar comparator yes. yes so obviously a duplicacy is there you can you say uh, one more uh, issue one more uh, problem with this circuit it can only detect error right and and, uh, uh, and say if there is an uh, uh, error right i can't say whether this error has occurred in this module or this module right so it can only detect error it cannot correct error right so this is known as dual modularity so this is a uh, rarely uh, used uh, so you have an, a triple mo modular redundancy right and now you can see okay so much of uh, extra area right now i have an uh, voter right uh, and obviously you know, uh, from the name itself it suggests and you know, it can do you know, uh, two functions out here right can you guess what could be the two functions so when, uh, i have no three modules running parallelly right the voter can make two decisions what are those two decisions uh, one can be decide which module uh, because it can compare then it can compare with two yes. so then we identify which module has uh, yes. error yes so it can not only identify uh, no, the error right and it can also 
uh, right uh, and, uh, decide uh, no, uh, because there there un there is very unlikely uh, event that two modules will have errors right so most likely only one module will be erroneous uh, so it can isolate that particular uh, module uh, and then uh, no, that that can be isolated and the output uh, no, so can be given so so these are the things which you can do now you might be uh, wondering it is such a very very uh, redundant module and and it is not uh, practically uh, done okay so uh, that is not the case like like you have an uh, aircraft right system boeing 777 for example some of the systems are very very uh, critical say the engine control system or the flight control system you can't have you know, any failure there because you know, in the system there there has to be redundancies in in such critical applications anything happens and okay there is a, a possibility that the aircraft you know, uh, crashes right so so uh, when in an avionics field and all uh, we can never have a system uh, which doesn't have a redundancy so safety is paramount there and and it is uh, and a say uh, no, safe free uh, fail free operation is very very uh, critical in those conditions right so what they have like like you know for certain functions they have uh, three different you know, processors you know, running parallelly for each of these functions right and then they have an uh, motor right so so this is the uh, kind of you know, uh, this is uh, uh, at the modular uh, at the at the uh, chip level itself you know, uh, the entire chip uh, functioning is done by three different manufacturers okay so this is known as a triple modular redundancy and it is very much in uh, practical uh, use these days okay uh, now this uh, the second one is a temporal redundancy right uh, temporal uh, redundancy uh, only means that uh, you uh, if say one operation is to be done instead of doing it once now you do it you know, uh, twice and and see whether the uh, same uh, result is you know, uh, available okay and 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 then you uh, you can detect the error so uh, now now suppose uh, there is a, a module uh, if it has got say a hundred uh, uh, nanosecond delay you give one and then you take one output and if it is not a pipeline structure right you give the second output and 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 wait for a hundred nanosecond right uh, so so it will cause a you know, lot of you know, uh, delay issues but uh, these days we know that uh, almost all the uh, uh, processors these days they are in uh, risk processors and uh, pipeline structures there will be small small uh, pipe so one input you give right and uh, by the time it comes here it will be keep capturing in the flip flops you you can afford to give uh, the second input okay so so the clock speed is very very high uh, so even if you give uh, uh, two different uh, uh, vectors uh, it it won't you know, uh, take much of a time, right? So it will it will uh, go from here to here, right? So uh, okay, uh, this so uh, you can you know, do uh, this kind of you know, uh, testing also. But if there is an you know, a permanent you know, fault uh, in in one particular you know, a module, right? And both in in both the inputs, you, know, you might get a uh, similar output, okay? Uh, so, but this, these kind of tests are uh, uh, more uh, applicable for uh, uh, analog circuits and RF domain uh, circuits uh, because uh, uh, so not very much for uh, digital stuck at faults. Okay, uh, but we'll see uh, e even uh, uh, this is used for certain uh, uh, digital uh, memory uh, related operations, a modified version of this. Okay, we will see that when we uh, talk about uh, memory uh, testing, right. Uh, and the uh, third one uh, is an important one uh, where uh, we uh, 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 within the bits which is uh, the way uh, we design the circuits uh, we don't allow at the output uh, all kinds of an uh, outputs okay so the number of outputs uh, are uh, limited uh, right and 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 if the results are uh, not uh, no, within those limits okay so this is can be used for uh, when you are transmitting one signal to uh, other uh, uh, no, place if, if there is an uh, uh, error which gets induced you can detect an error okay uh, so that is also there but while designing the circuits also we will we'll, uh, see later on and the same concept uh, is applicable there also now uh, here if you see here uh, this is known as the uh, hamming distance okay a uh, hamming distance now uh, what is the hamming distances uh, from uh, here to here uh, if you see here uh, right uh, there are uh, uh, two bits uh, uh, which are uh, uh, changing uh, from here to here so these are uh, out of the uh, total uh, possible uh, combinations in this cube only this and these these three are uh, permitted 
okay uh, at the uh, output others are not permitted so if you see here uh, in this uh, uh, if there is an uh, one bit error okay from here uh, if, if the output is just an, a one bit error then uh, you will find that uh, uh, you can uh, because it will either land up here or here or here these are not valid codes valid outputs okay so so you need to uh, uh, generate in signal in such a manner that uh, these signals uh, these outputs are not valid so once you see these things they are not valid outputs right so if if one error gets induced into this uh, input data then uh, you can easily uh, uh, verify whether the error has come but if there are uh, uh, two bits they get corrupted uh, in that case uh, you can't detect okay so it could uh, land up uh, here or here right so so uh, having distance of two a uh, single bit error can be detected but double uh, bit error cannot be detected right so i can have an hamming distance uh, uh, 3 also right wherein uh, these these are all uh, not permitted bits okay these bits are not permitted so uh, in this case a uh, single bit error uh, and also double bit error also can be uh, detected because if you see if there are uh, two errors then uh, all these uh, bits will be generated which are uh, 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 which are known as the error bits okay so only uh, this bit is is permitted so so this is known as the uh, hamming <coughs> distance okay this is two uh, uh, having distance is the distance between these two right how many bits are changed per zero zero you, you see two bits are uh, changed here uh, two from here to here all the three bits are changing right so uh, so you could have an, an a having distance of uh, greater than uh, three also right so uh, there are uh, you can accordingly uh, classify the codes as a single error correcting and double an error detecting that means an, i can correct single error but i can detect double error okay so that is a hamming distance 4 code we'll see some examples it will be clear uh, hd3 uh, can an, right this is hamming distance 4 okay so that is an, better than hd3 so as you go higher it will be better so as you go higher uh, so, uh, many redundant bits will be and uh, uh, incorporated okay so having distance 4 means that means more for the same like like here and uh, 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 three bit out of this only three are allowed so on here only two are allowed so if you have to send uh, more information a few more bits needs to be uh, added right here only only two uh, information can be sent in this particular uh, system so uh, as you keep uh, moving high the number of uh, bits will uh, increase okay total uh, bits requirement now uh, here uh, hd3 uh, having distance 3 uh, can only correct uh, uh, either correct single errors or uh, detect single and double errors but cannot do both okay so that is the thing now uh, let me just give you one uh, example all right so uh, how to uh, uh, code the bits okay so this is uh, essentially uh, uh, this next few slides are uh, 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 if there is an uh, error okay uh, from one place to other while while transmitting if some error gets induced uh, how to detect that error and correct that error okay uh, that is there uh, uh, the, uh, but the concepts are equally if you are going for uh, uh, some uh, logic design these concepts can be uh, uh, extended into those designs also okay uh, now uh, suppose uh, what is the uh, number of uh, redundant bits uh, which needs to be added right for that okay this is the uh, formula right if uh, m is the uh, total number of uh, original uh, bits okay now uh, how many more uh, redundant bits uh, i need to uh, add okay so uh, that formula of with, with this formula i come to suppose i have a four bit data which requires to be uh, transmitted okay and and for those on uh, a four bit data uh, i need to uh, code it in such a manner right some additional redundant bits will be there and because of those additional redundant bits uh, uh, if there is an error in the bit you know, if, if there is an, a single error okay we are not talking about multiple errors uh, while it is being transmitted if there is an, a single error a single one of the data gets flipped then we should be able to detect it and also correct it okay uh, detect it and correct it okay both so it is known as an error uh, correction and detection okay for that for four bit if i just send the four bit i will not be able to do i should i should 
and uh, put some additional bits. So, how many more additional bits are there? That is given by this formula. Okay. Uh, so, if I just uh, how to get that value of r? So, if I put r is equal to one, two to the power of uh, uh, one is two. Uh, four is the bits which I want to transmit. Uh, r plus one. So, obviously, this criteria is not met. Then I put r is equal to two. Uh, so now uh, I I have uh, two to the power of two four and this is uh, four plus two plus one so uh, these two uh, so r uh, the value of r one and two will not be acceptable if I put r is equal to three uh, two to the power of three is eight uh, which is greater than uh, uh, m which is four uh, plus three uh, plus one right and three is r r uh, plus one. So, uh, greater than or equal to, this is 8, this is 8. So, r equal to 3. That means the uh, minimum number of extra uh, bits I need to put in the code uh, is uh, 3, right? And where do I put those 3 bits? Uh, like, uh, two to the, in, I put those 3 bits as 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, and at position 2. So, this is how my uh, error code, the final code, uh, along with error detection and uh, no, uh, correction code will look like. Okay, uh, these are the M1, M2, uh, M4, M3, M2, M1 is the original data, uh, 4 bits, P1, P2, P3 are the parity bits, okay, these parity bits can be uh, either be even parity or odd parity, so uh, at the receive, if the trans, in the transmitting session, if you have even parity, at the receiving end also, you should check for even parity, okay, so this is how you, you frame the word, okay, uh, is this uh, okay till here? Yeah, yeah, Kirti, are you in uh, sync? You join now? Yeah, Jaisen, is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, now uh, these positions are important, okay? You can't put these parity bits uh, wherever you like, okay? So, these positions are fixed, right? Uh, if there is, uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, R equal to 4 uh, for uh, M equal to 5, then uh, the next parity bit will be at 2 to the power of 3 at the 8th position. Okay, So, these positions of the parity bit are fixed. You can't put it uh, anywhere. Okay, Now, uh, now, now suppose uh, this is the, if I have to do 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So, uh, I put this uh, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, 1 and 1 here. Parity 1, parity 2 and parity 3 okay that needs to be set okay now if you see here uh, this is 0 uh, 1 2 3 uh, 4 uh, 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 no no we start with 1 okay 1 2 uh, 3 uh, 4 uh, 5 uh, 6 and 7 okay in decimal this is represented in binary now uh, for parity bit 1 okay for parity bit 1 uh, I will check 2 to the power of 0. Parity 1 uh, is corresponding to 2 to the power of 0. So, where all it is 1? It is 1 here, it is 1 here, it is 1 here and it is 1 here in these positions. Okay. So, I uh, decide the value of parity 1. Okay. I decide the value of parity 1 by taking these bits. Okay. So, 3 is 1, uh, 5 is 1 and 7 is 1. And now, uh, in this particular example, uh, we are talking about even parity, right? Uh, no, uh, did I uh, make a, a mistake? One, uh, no, uh, one, three, five, and seven. Okay, these are the bits which I need to consider. Now, uh, here in this bit, okay, uh, uh, three is one, correct? Uh, five is one, and seven is zero. So, one, one, and zero. So, the value of P will be zero. P1 will be 0. So, I, I put a, a 0 here. Uh, is this uh, clear to all of you? Uh, Ranjani, uh, Gokhale, is it okay? Sir, could you please repeat? Once? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, sir, can can you add some even and odd, then we can make parity with uh, that parity 1. Okay, okay. Sir. Can you repeat again? Then we'll yeah, see. yeah. Right? See, uh, first is uh, first is even parity. We are talking about even parity, so we forget about odd parity. Okay. Now uh, we have this four bits to be coded into seven bits, right? Why seven bits? Because uh, from this calculation, we came to know that uh, for a four bit a redundant, three more bits are required. And what are the position of those three? These are also fixed. Okay. So now this is the uh, seven bits. These are one, two, three, four, seven bits, right? This data I already place it at these four positions. Uh, is this much okay? And I need to now find out yes, the sir. value of P1, P2, and P3. Okay. Now, now I take how to find out the value of P1. Okay. So uh, this is a table uh, where uh, 
uh, this is a decimal equivalent of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, decimal equivalent. Now P1. Okay, now uh, for P1, okay, uh, this is the column which I will see. Okay, uh, because 2 to the power of 0, uh, this is the decimal equivalent. 2 to the power of C, uh, 0 uh, is uh, representing uh, P1, where all it is 1. Here it is 1, here it is 1, here it is 1, here it is 1. Uh, that means in uh, a uh, position 1, 3, uh, 5, and 7, right? And uh, here, out of these three uh, P1 figures, so uh, in this parity uh, to find out the value of P1, so uh, this one uh, is coming from position number 3, uh, this one is coming from position number 5, uh, and, and uh, I shouldn't have drawn a uh, 0 out here because it is only uh, 7 here. So this 0 is coming from 7. So now to make this entire thing even parity, I put P1 is equal to 0. Uh, is it clear now to all of you? Understood, sir. Okay. Now I have to find out you know, P2. You know, what will be the parity of uh, P, what should be the value. So I have put a, a 0 here. Okay. Uh, uh, these, these values were already there. Now I computed the value of P1. Now if I have to compute the value of uh, P2, right? And uh, now I take uh, this particular column, right? And and find out where all uh, P uh, it is one. So one, two, uh, three, four. That is uh, two, three, six, seven. Uh, P2 is supposed to be one. So these are the elements uh, which I will pick up from here, right? So uh, two, I already have an uh, one here. Okay, I have put that one here. So, uh, this one is coming from here, right? And then I have put two zeros here, okay? Uh, that is from six, uh, 6 and 7. So, 6 and 7 are zeros. So, these two uh, zeros are coming from here. Now, to make this entire thing uh, even, I put an, uh, P2 as 1, okay? So, I put P2 as 1, okay? Now, I take for the uh, third one. Uh, this is the uh, uh, value of P3, which I... So, if you see uh, P3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 is 1. So, I need to take uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, it is 0, 0, 1 here. So, I need to put uh, uh, one more uh, 1 here. So, that uh, this entire thing becomes uh, uh, even. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, this is the uh, final uh, uh, code. Uh, uh, is it clear to all of you how to write this final code? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, having uh, written... Sir, I, I yeah, there's only one doubt. Actually, I joined a little late. Uh, yeah. uh, this yellow, uh, whatever yellow color is there, uh, that is given. No, this that is, data will be given. No, no. This is just you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Normal decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, okay. zero, 0 is not okay. considered. Okay. Just. Okay. Now I have. Now uh, suppose I am. Uh, uh, no, I am. Tra this is the original data which require which was being transmitted, right? And one data uh, has been received erroneously. Okay. Rest of the data is same. This particular data has got uh, flipped. Okay. Now it has got flipped. Now I compute. Uh, P0, P1, P2, P3, right, uh, here, from this data, okay, uh, I, I check for even parity of P1, okay, now what is P1, 1357, so 1, okay, uh, 3, uh, 5, uh, 7, right, is it even or odd now? Odd. Odd, right. Okay, so that uh, but I am, I am working on an even parity thing, right? So I will say uh, I'll put a one here. Okay, that means there is an error detected in P3. Okay, now I check for P2. Okay, now uh, P2 is also two, three, six, seven. Okay, a uh, two, uh, three, uh, six, uh, six, uh, six, seven. It is again coming out to be odd. So I put a one here, right? I check for uh, P1, right? Now, uh, here again, it is important that we write in the same order. Uh, P1 is uh, in the LSB, 
right uh, this is more significant and this is more significant so you need to write that okay uh, p1 corresponds to 2 equal to 0 p2 corresponds to 2 equal to 1 if you if you uh, mix up this then uh, there will be an issue so you need to write this in the correct order okay now similarly uh, p1 is also uh, since it, since it is coming on uh, a no, uh, one uh, odd so i will write this one so uh, what is the uh, decimal equivalent of 111 it is 7 that means the seventh bit uh, is wrong out here so i can i detect this error and correct this error also yes sir right so it is possible so so by adding three more uh, bits okay i can just put only one one bit also uh, which says the parity bit okay if i just put p1 okay and i don't keep it will be able to detect whether there is an error or not but i cannot correct that error right by putting p2 and p3 additionally and following this scheme i can not only detect the error but i can also correct the error okay now i take one more examples okay uh, uh, here uh, i am uh, assuming that the, this bit is changed okay this bit is changed okay now if this bit is changed uh, if you can uh, just quickly see uh, P2 and P3 will not get affected because uh, uh, this doesn't come in calculation of P2, P3. Only P1 calculation uh, will be erroneous. So, I'll get 1. So, uh, no, right? so, this is going to be here. We have checked if a data is getting changed, I am able to get. Uh, here, the parity bit, there is an uh, error in the uh, parity bit. Uh, no, uh, that also we are able to detect. Okay, So, so this error correction, uh, okay, uh, doesn't distinguish between uh, uh, whether it is a parity bit or a data bit. Okay, uh, wherever one single error has happened, okay, it will be able to uh, correct that. Okay, uh, is it okay with all of you? Is it okay? Anybody has got any doubts? Okay, now uh, one. Sir, could you, sir, could you please uh, just once uh, repeat this uh, correction mechanism? Correction mechanism is, right, I have received this data, okay, if I have received this data, okay, I will uh, find out the value of P1, P2, P3, whether it is even or odd, okay, uh, if it is odd, I write 1, if it is e even, I put it as 0, if it is odd, that means some error has occurred, so I put 1, 1, 1, right, in this case, since this is getting flipped, okay, I compute the value of an, a P1, right, uh, P1 is what? 1357, right? 1, uh, 3, uh, 5, and, and 7. There are 3 ones. So it is odd. So I put this here as 1. Similarly, uh, uh, P2 is 2367. So uh, 2, uh, 3, uh, and 6, and uh, 7. Again, there is an error there. It is odd. It is coming out to be odd. So 111, the decimal equivalent is 7. That means in the 7th position, there is an error. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Right. Similarly, uh, uh, this this was the original code. Uh, if you uh, if you send this original code, uh, if I do an, uh, I will get zero zero zero. Okay. All of them will be even only. Right. Similarly, here I am putting an, uh, this as an erroneous code. So I am getting zero zero one. So I'll I, I so I'll come to know this is erroneous. Okay. Is it okay? Now this, this is uh, this this error detection uh, and correction is generally when you are transmitting one data from place A to place B. But suppose I have to check a memory location, right? So I want to uh, check a <coughs> operation of a memory, right? We did all those you know, uh, so many uh, you know, uh, runs and all in memory, right? You know, uh, testing uh, uh, watch March runs and all things like that. But uh, no, no, this is another option. Uh, suppose I write, uh, no, I put this particular uh, data uh, into write into my uh, memory, right? And then then I uh, read it again uh, from the memory. So uh, if I uh, come to know, uh, right, uh, uh, there is an uh, 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 right uh, error in, in only in uh, one bit, right? It is a 64-bit memory. Suppose. Right, and, and, and I am putting uh, out of those 64-bit uh, 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 data, if I want to uh, make, uh, 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 I am putting some data and reading some data, right, over a period of time, and uh, if I am expecting, okay, some memory uh, cells may go wrong, I need not discard the entire uh, uh, memory, 
right? So uh, for a specific application, suppose uh, it is a 64 uh, 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 bit long memory, I may want to uh, uh, use it only for 32 bit data and reserve some bits for error correction. And when I am writing a data into the memory, uh, I will uh, write along with an uh, 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 error detection and correction code right and and subsequently when i am reading also right and i will and if at all there is some you know, uh, error which gets induced also i'll be able to correct right so so uh, because memory is what uh, it is going from the chip to the external chip through a pcb again reading so there is a possibility some error might get uh, induced right Subse as the system is running over a period of time not during fabrication you have checked okay because of aging some cell may go wrong right one not cell and even that one uh, cell going wrong you can't discard the entire memory right so can we have a uh, better system like this we can have right right just in understanding the concept right what, what what we want to say right suppose i have a memory 64 bit i have a 1 tb memory right so uh, everything is 64 and a bit long right so maybe I don't want to write 64 bit uh, data always into that memory. I would want to write 32, say 40 bits and I want to reserve some bits for the error. So when I am, uh, whenever I am writing data to that memory, I will write, I will write along with the uh, error detection and correction code. And subsequently when I am uh, reading it also, some, some uh, memory can get uh, corrupted at any time, right? So that entire data will not be lost, correct? And that entire cell uh, need not because if you have to uh, if, if there is an, uh, one single error in that particular uh, uh, word okay then not only that word needs to be discarded that address address line also needs to be masked right because if you are going to discard that entire word it, it is not a very simple thing right you have to detect that there is an error then you have to mask that particular wo word initially during testing it may be possible right once that uh, post fabrication test is done and it, uh, you are using it, maybe after one year, out of that 64 bits, one bit has got corrupted, then what? Uh, it has got uh, some fault has developed there, then what? Right? It will, will it continue to remain there and keep corrupting your data every time you write some data, you read some data, you'll be writing one data and reading some other data. Can you let that happen? We can't have, do that, right? So if we have an error detection and correction system, right? And, and uh, okay, obviously the penalty, which there will be some penalty in, in terms of that, now your data will not be 64 bit, it will be lesser than that. Some bits are reserved for that. And obviously uh, this hardware to detect, uh, to, to code this data uh, with the error correction and detection codes and then uh, to detect and correct again, some extra hardware is there. But in critical applications, uh, these are some of the uh, options which are uh, available, okay. Uh, now, uh, in, then, then we uh, talk about right, error detection in uh, microprocessors uh, uh, cores. Okay? So, there are a uh, few things which we can do. Uh, <coughs> microprocessor uh, unit uh, will have functional units. Right? Inside that, there will be small, small uh, functional units. So, uh, one option is, uh, is a general, right? a general method is uh, to treat this unit as a black box and have an, a physical or a temporal redundancy, which we saw, right? temporal physical re redundancy is uh, uh, using one more of the functional block and comparing it, you could have a dual or a, an, a triple or an, a, you can give an, a, a multiple inputs at different time intervals and then uh, check whether we are getting the uh, same. The next approach uh, is to use uh, arithmetic codes. Okay, uh, suppose I have to do A plus B. Okay, uh, with a functional unit. Uh, first, I give A plus B. I get a result. Okay, then I give 10 A plus 10 B, and I check the result. Right? If I am getting 10 C, okay, most likely there is no error in the system. Okay. Because it's a digital system, right? So when I'm multiplying it by uh, 10, right? So what I, I am shifting those uh, zeros and ones uh, na, towards the MSB, some change will happen. A different pattern is going to be applied now. So uh, most likely, right? Uh, if if there is an error, then they, if this the chances of that this and this getting uh, matched uh, completely, right? Uh, will be very very uh, remote. Okay. okay, so this the, the chances of this uh, uh, no, this uh, the answer what we are getting 10C. 
okay uh, is very remote uh, in case there is an uh, no, uh, error also so uh, with great confidence you can say if i am doing an uh, a plus b and i am getting c then uh, i don't i do a 10a plus 10b uh, and then i get the result c uh, 10c okay uh, and i will verify with the result which i got earlier c again i will multiply it with 10 and see what is the result i am getting here these two results have to be the same uh, is it uh, okay is it understood are you in agreement yeah ranjani is it uh, understood yes, sir. right you do it okay now uh, tell me uh, uh, hardware wise okay uh, uh, is a 10a plus 10b or 8a plus 8b is equal to 8c uh, which is better implementation wise Eight, 8a plus 8b yes why uh, it's uh, 2 raised to something so uh, it is a uh, uh, hexa actually hexa code they may be no, that also hexa code see See, we can just simply we can just simply shift the bits to get eight yes, times. Yes, correct, right? So uh, although I gave an example of ten a, ten b, ten c, right? A uh, multiplication of ten a, ten b, we saw okay, multiplication is a complex uh, process, right? But if you have to do eight a and eight b, uh, suppose you know, this is you know, a zero, uh, one uh, one zero zero. This is four, right? If I just you know, uh, shift it right, right, once, it will become a one zero zero zero, right? Uh, this is what 16 right if i uh, uh, shift it again right it will become 32 so uh, any 2 to the power of 3 multiplications right it, it is pretty easy so uh, if i have to do this and then and i can and probably i uh, just gave an example of 10 but in actual amp uh, and, uh, this thing i can uh, do uh, a shift operation and when you do the shift operation obviously uh, the paths uh, will be different and if there is an uh, error right and 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 both the answers you know, may not match okay so finally you get c and uh, c also you shift it by uh, first you shift a shift shift b then you uh, do an add operation uh, then you you see the initial result c and you do same number of shift there and and you compare both these results so we can easily uh, detect if there is an uh, error okay so these are this is known as an uh, uh, arithmetic uh, uh, thing okay uh, now uh, there is uh, another uh, option also right and uh, this is uh, generally uh, again for uh, adder you are you are adding uh, these two bits okay right and, and then uh, what you are uh, doing is uh, uh, you are you can uh, uh, shift the addition right uh, into some other bits like it is an uh, 8 bit suppose it's an 8 bit register uh, you want to uh, add two data right it's a, suppose it, these four you four you get a result okay now you shift this data here this entire data here again you will get an answer and you you compare right so uh, right it, it could be uh, uh, the, so you are shifting this data from here to here here to here or you can just shift by one one bit also and then again add right so if if uh, uh, here it is uh, i think uh, yeah it is it, it is done a rotation out here and 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 if there is no errors in this register both the answers will be perfectly matching okay so this is just shifting this data okay uh, it is known as uh, re-execution with sh shifted operands okay so you just uh, shift the data into now uh, this data has been uh, brought out here okay it, it is a six bit register so here it is kept blank out here in this case it is kept blank here you have to get the correct data so if it is not correct obviously there is an, an uh, erroneous uh, in this particular case uh, it is an erroneous but you won't come to know uh, whether it is uh, here uh, just because manually you are looking at it you are saying okay this is correct and and, and uh, uh, this is an uh, 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 erroneous right because you just have to uh, compare these data so if it is same uh, you can't say you know, which is the error right so unless you do one more operation again shift by one more if you are doing it in a, a three times shift then i can say okay uh, there is an error in this particular in a, a column right i can I, I can get the correct answer also so just by doing uh, two operations i can only say there is an error in this particular this is a full adder right 
each each vertical line is a full adder so i can say this particular full adder is faulty okay but i cannot uh, no, correct it or, or i cannot uh, uh, say uh, no, uh, uh, i can only identify uh, this is the uh, but i cannot identify which is the correct answer actually okay i can only identify which of these full adders are uh, no, by doing two shifts okay by doing three shifts probably i can again uh, do the uh, I, i can take a vote and uh, decide okay which could be the correct answer okay that is uh, provided in this particular microprocessor it is an uh, uh, six uh, no, uh, bit microprocessor and, and i am using uh, the four data i am uh, using i am leaving uh, no, uh, two vacant out here so these kind of things can be uh, done here right uh, uh, another uh, option available is okay uh, for multiplication okay multiplication is a very very uh, complex uh, and time consuming uh, process right so uh, you we can't uh, uh, keep uh, uh, doing here like shift operation so uh, uh, addition is okay but multiplication if you have to again multiply two data as we know multiplication is a big process okay so two two times doing a uh, uh, multiplication uh, here also right uh, the two times we are uh, doing the addition so uh, so if you are doing again two two times multiplication uh, it will take uh, that much more uh, time okay now uh, here also in this reduced uh, execution and shifted operation methods which is also known as uh, reso uh, we are doing uh, multiplication two times but the second time uh, we are uh, uh, doing multiplication of small numbers okay for example okay uh, uh, um, first we are doing uh, 6 into 2 we are getting an uh, 72 we want to uh, verify uh, whether 72 uh, uh, this multiplication is good so i take a mod of 6 and uh, uh, okay uh, multiply it and uh, mod of uh, uh, 12 right mod 5 or mod 5 of 72 right and 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 multiply these two mods and and see whether uh, mod of 72 matches with that okay uh, so 6 mod 5 uh, is 1 right uh, you understand what is mod when you uh, divide 6 by 5 a uh, remainder is 1 okay uh, when i uh, divide uh, 12 by 5 uh, the mod is uh, uh, 2 correct because uh, uh, 5 into 2 is 10 remainder is 2 2 so first i do 6 into 12 i get 72 i take a mod of this value and i will get 2 okay i'll keep that in memory then i will take you know, a mod of 6 i get the answer of 1 i take you know, a mod of 5 and answer i get as 2 uh, and then i multiply that i get an answer of 2 and i will see okay what was the mod i got here 2 so whether these two and these two are matching if it is matching that means and there is no uh, error in the uh, multiplication model okay now uh, you again the question uh, arises what is uh, 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 the advantage out here by taking mod by taking mod uh, this this can be uh, just a uh, one bit into one bit multiplier or a two bit into two bit multiplier okay i can use an, a two bit into two bit multiplier right by appropriately selecting uh, uh, a five okay uh, now uh, if it is five the remainder can come up till four okay uh, and up till four means it will be a three bit into three bit multiplier right uh, is it okay if i take a mod of five uh, can i get the maximum remainder i will get is zero to four right isn't it yes sir right right so so uh, the uh, if uh, yeah, so that uh, that's all now uh, again the selection of mod also okay uh, is is uh, dependent on uh, the uh, uh, right uh, uh, if you if you take a, a binary number right uh, 2 4 8 and all uh, through uh, shift registers you know, we can do the division also like we moved it's towards the right right if you move towards the left suppose i have this uh, a number of you know, a seven okay if i do you know, uh, mod five right so 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 this is the uh, de remainder column if i just shift it by one okay so this one will uh, come here right so this will give me the mod right now i am taking mod with respect to two right now suppose this is zero it, it gets perfectly divided by 2 then the mod will be 1 right now if i have to take mod 4 i will uh, shift it by 2 right so uh, uh, like like for example 8 is 0 0 0 if i uh, shift it i will get 0 0 here that means 0 uh, but uh, suppose it is uh, 1 1 uh, 0 1 1 0 is what 8 plus uh, 2 10 
and if I uh, shift it here uh, two times, I will get 1, 0. So, uh, 10 uh, mod 4 uh, is 2. So, I will get 2 here. So, uh, this, this operation is also not a uh, hardware uh, uh, intense. Uh, uh, it does not require too much of a hardware. If you uh, select uh, this as a 2 to the power of n. Uh, are you all in agreement here? Like we did. The, so, so, if you see here. Now, uh, by simple checking for uh, errors, whether this module, there is an error or a module, can be uh, checked up by these simple operations. And uh, remember, uh, these checks will be done throughout your life cycle of your component. Okay? Because with aging also, if there is a problem which comes, right? Like built-in test every time. So, this is uh, done every time, right? So, so uh, this can be incorporated. Okay? So, even with aging, if some... Uh, problem comes up this doesn't require a test bench or the chip to be connected to any test this is done within the chip okay so uh, uh, is it okay till here from uh, simple concepts right now uh, now uh, uh, there are uh, other uh, uh, things also like like uh, uh, you have tightly lockstep redundant cores okay uh, what it uh, men, uh, means is uh, like uh, the entire core is in a uh, two cores are running in a parallelly okay and the entire core is in a replicated so uh, you had this uh, IBM 390 uh, this mainframe is no more uh, in use these days nobody uses that it's an old uh, in which uh, you had uh, the entire uh, two cores running parallelly okay uh, so so this was there uh, it is not no more uh, in use uh, now uh, what we have we have multi threading right so you have you know, cores in which you have uh, multi threads and and for very very complex you know, operations uh, right uh, the the, uh, the there is an uh, scheduler and uh, uh, which which gives you know, the the main uh, task is split into uh, small small task and and they are parallelly uh, in many threads it is done and then you, know, you you combine it or you have uh, several programs which are running uh, each of them will go into you know, uh, different different threads okay and parallel computation is done that is done but uh, may, many a times if some threads are uh, free uh, in that case the, the same uh, you know, uh, task can be given to two threads okay and you can uh, compare the results uh, right so whenever you know, uh, the cpu is not uh, loaded by 100 percent so we can you know, the system would uh, initiate a uh, periodic check of the uh, which uh, to check the performance of the system wherein uh, the given task only uh, will be given uh, to uh, multiple threads and, and then it runs and it compares the data okay so this is known as a redundant multi threading uh, which is lock with without lock stepping that means the entire uh, core is not uh, uh, you don't have a duplicate core okay which is running uh, parallelly so this is an uh, um, it, it, it is much cheaper obviously and uh, you have a dynamic uh, uh, verification of uh, invariants okay now uh, what it is uh, like you, know, uh, you have an uh, like like certain uh, control logic right uh, so generally for uh, microprocessors okay uh, certain data like like instruction fetch data from the memory write data all those uh, instruction uh, sets uh, irrespective of whichever program you run okay uh, there will be some definite pattern okay because you know, uh, like if the microprocessor is you know, uh, running uh, fine and things like that okay uh, the uh, for especially for a, a, a risk uh, computer the instruction you know, sets are small small instructions you fetch the instruction you decode the instruction you write it and then you place it back to the memory so there is a controlled uh, sequence okay so based on those uh, controlled uh, sequence all the uh, logic uh, the data could change uh, but the control logic generally uh, remains uh, same so if you keep uh, 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 monitoring the uh, logic okay uh, so during the design stage uh, you can uh, uh, create a signature okay and when the system is running Again, you take a uh, lot of this control logic uh, words and create a signature and you can do a, a match of that too and you can uh, say that, okay, uh, something is wrong, wrong with the microprocessor, okay. So, that can be done. Uh, similarly, uh, for uh, data also, uh, so uh, generally, you know, if, if everything is working fine, okay, uh, it is uh, very rarely does it happen that uh, uh, there is a, you know, uh, uh, there will be some pattern in the data you know, which can be 
uh, same. Suppose data flow, uh, right, right? One data is getting is you are coming from some memory, and and the next data is coming from somewhere other memory again from here. So that kind of a uh, random pattern indicates there is a fault. Uh, generally speaking. If something everything is working fine, okay, from your main memory, some data from this sector is continuously being read, and and that will be probably uh, brought into the uh, cache memory, uh, or right, uh, or into first it will be uh, brought into the RAM from there into the cache memory. So from this uh, memory flow also, if everything is uh, working fine, uh, there will be a definite pattern. But if if it is an uh, uh, right one data is being picked here again from here again this data is being uh, right the the RAM memory is continuously being uh, updated with with new data and, and there is an uh, uh, there is very very less uh, strike rate of cache because suppose every time it is going to RAM instead of there is no data available in the cache uh, that means there is something wrong uh, with our data flow mechanism okay so that kind of things also uh, can be uh, done out here right and uh, we have something known as uh, watchdog uh, processors okay so this is the uh, main processor uh, this is a watchdog uh, processor uh, this watchdog processor basically monitors the bus data okay and from the pattern in the uh, data and the addresses which are being placed generally this is data bus and the the memory address bus also it is multiplexed in most of the processors so so from here from this data itself you can make an uh, no, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 no, uh, informed decision whether there is some issue with the processor or not. Okay, uh, because this data which is flowing in, in this and the addresses which are flowing in this bus uh, can uh, detect. Okay, and then it can pick up some data also and do the analysis. So the main processor is not tasked with error detection. Okay, you have a small watchdog processor uh, which has access to this data and memory also. So the purpose of this watchdog processor is just to uh, uh, check okay, if everything is okay or not, then accordingly it can uh, prompt uh, uh, what is the action to be taken. Okay. Uh, sometimes it can just uh, uh, tell the user okay, there could be an error with the data. Okay. If it is a critical system, then it will uh, trigger a uh, rectification process also if it is available. Right? Uh, Okay, so uh, let's uh, cover one or two slides and then we'll take it. Right? Okay. Now uh, here uh, it's a, there's another method with uh, software and hardware. Okay, uh, both in uh, combination. Okay. Now when you uh, write this is the original code, you are uh, uh, adding uh, R2 and R uh, R3 contents of R1 and R3, and you are uh, putting the uh, sum uh, into the R1 register and Again, uh, from uh, the this sum, whatever you, we have this sum here, you are uh, doing an XOR with uh, contents of another uh, uh, memory and then you are uh, putting it, it, it into uh, R4, right, into the register R4, right, and then you are storing that data into some memory cell, right. So, uh, if you want to uh, do a uh, redundancy also running parallelly, uh, error detection then what you can do is uh, you are doing r1 and r2 and you are uh, putting it in, into uh, some register okay now i am uh, taking uh, uh, this is uh, address okay and the address given by contents of r2 r3 so i am again uh, uh, i am doing the same uh, operation with some other uh, uh, register also so i am uh, uh, right r2 r3 and i am putting it into uh, this register I, I am again i am uh, uh, du duplicating uh, uh, these two things, right? Uh, and then uh, uh, I am I am reading these two datas, right? And and, and uh, if if they are not equal, obviously this contents of R1, R2, R3, and R11, R12, R13 has to be the same. Okay, that you have to initialize. Uh, similarly, R5 and R15, this data has to be same. So this is uh, there is no uh, uh, hardware involved here, right? It it is just through uh, software. Okay, you are using these uh, memory cells, right? You are putting some data uh, into uh, three cells, and and result you are putting into the fourth cell. Again, I am uh, putting uh, the, the same data into three other different cells parallelly, and I am doing the computation and uh, putting it into uh, this cell. Okay, 
and 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 everything is okay uh, that means you know i am able to read the data from the memory cell uh, and do the operation correctly and uh, put it back there okay so this is known as a mix of an uh, uh, hardware and uh, software which we can uh, do uh, this is a uh, cache and uh, uh, memories uh, here generally what you have uh, right another uh, uh, the uh, cache memory uh, out here which is uh, closest to your uh, core uh, here uh, speed is the essence right so uh, if you uh, put error correction out here this will uh, slow down your right operation so so generally we don't incorporate uh, any uh, error correction here this will be only error detection and if error is uh, detected uh, then only then uh, probably that portion of the cache can be uh, right made uh, redundant and only uh, in the uh, next level of uh, uh, next level will be ram and and then the uh, secondary right so uh, this only says that okay uh, we generally don't have an uh, error correction in the uh, cache memory okay so okay so uh, there could be uh, uh, problems in the uh, uh, address decoding uh, uh, mechanism also right in the memory so uh, in that case uh, 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 even if that uh, there is an for uh, some error in that particular memory location uh, it cannot be uh, detect, uh, detected right because uh, because you are taking you are fetching the data from some other location right uh, and and the, if, if that data available in in that particular memory location c suppose the, cont the memory location b is faulty okay there is a memory cell uh, one of the cells you no know, uh, uh, one of the bit positions or one of the cells of the uh, memory uh, b memory b is a uh, 64 bit data uh, location uh, it is faulty right and and you, know, uh, you want to check uh, you are just normal running you know, uh, that you know, parity check or some other check right but what is happening is there is a problem with the address base so every time you are uh, checking for writing a data into b uh, it is uh, going into c uh, right and and from c you are fetching the data then you know, then there could be a uh, problem there right so this cannot be detected so in, in such cases right uh, uh, so you can, we can uh, whether whether it is going into the correct location or coming back from the correct location uh, to do to do that what we can do is uh, suppose an uh, data from memory a is taken uh, and and a uh, memory uh, 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 d is taken okay uh, so uh, you are doing an uh, xor of that and then you are uh, coding it for error detection and correction uh, and then you are you know, placing it into the you know, right and the uh, uh, into the same memory location a right so uh, what you are doing uh, a is being uh, replaced with uh, a uh, x or uh, d okay at the uh, same time you know, uh, uh, if this is a uh, 64 bit memory if you are uh, uh, partitioning it and and some data some bits uh, you are uh, using uh, to store the uh, location of say you know, uh, the data of uh, uh, d is being uh, uh, stored there okay all right and this is also because generally uh, when you uh, write right uh, uh, the information of a and uh, d are lost and, and only this data is available right so if you do that uh, now uh, after uh, doing that right uh, if you if you uh, pull back this data from here right uh, and you do an again an xor operation okay uh, because you know, data of you know, a is available well, uh, you do an uh, xor operation and what is was stored earlier right uh, if you uh, compare these two data and if it is the uh, same right so that means you know, uh, the uh, addressing system also can be verified whether this data uh, like in this case suppose this you know, uh, data is you know, uh, uh, here right again this data is being fetched from the location you know, d now uh, here suppose it is going into a different uh, location uh, in that case uh, there will be an uh, error which is uh, picked up so any uh, problem with the uh, address location uh, can be uh, detected by this only thing is uh, whenever you are writing an uh, data out here right so uh, the contents of an uh, a and uh, d addresses are xor and and the result is being stored here uh, along with that uh, this particular uh, address also is being uh, placed here and and then again you are calling back you know, those addresses uh, and again you are comparing this data in the second time okay so if it is the same that means there is no error so this is uh, one of the uh, methods which we could do and in in uh, multi processors okay uh, uh, now uh, we have detected errors how to do an a uh, self repair 
okay, okay if there are uh, several cores okay the faulty core can be uh, replaced with the redundant core so you have some redundant cores but this will be um, uh, highly uh, inefficient way of doing it uh, something known as a uh, scheduler can be done uh, each core right uh, uh, may uh, the, the uh, multiplier of that core may be faulty in core 1 right divider of the uh, 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 core 2 may be faulty right so uh, when you do all these checks what we discussed earlier so there were so many checks right to detect errors so uh, if we find out that okay uh, this particular core uh, <coughs> has got a uh, 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 faulty uh, multiplier right and, and this has got a faulty uh, divider then uh, probably we can uh, not uh, use this uh, uh, this particular core for multiplication and this for a divider you can uh, swap the uh, 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 actions you know, the the uh, task allocation is done by the scheduler right so that you know, improved schedule you can do uh, by assigning okay uh, the uh, correct functionality so the entire core uh, need not be uh, no, uh, discarded only that particular uh, function of that core which is giving uh, faulty results okay so so we can mask that particular function or we we need not give that particular function uh, which is giving faulty results to that core okay so each core will have an uh, 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 it, it may be doing multiplication correct it may be doing a uh, division wrong okay so accordingly the scheduler you know, the error can be detected and the schedule we can schedule the course uh, with task accordingly okay so that which is giving faulty results that will not be uh, assigned to that particular core okay and uh, also uh, each core actually uh, if you divide the uh, uh, cores okay uh, there are uh, several right each core will have an, an a uh, set of hardware which will do uh, fetching the data there will be set of hardwares which will do decode which will do execute which will do na uh, uh, which will <coughs> put the data uh, back into the memory or it will uh, uh, decode the memory address and then there will be uh, something which will be write the data back into the memory right this is uh, decoding the uh, uh, mem uh, uh, this is the uh, finding out which memory the data needs to be written after execution uh, the memory location into which that data needs to be uh, written that will be computed and then you do the uh, write operation so uh, so uh, any core uh, every core will have uh, sub blocks and uh, na, this core uh, should be able to use uh, na, this decode if this decode is uh, faulty so that it can do fetch here decode here execute here like this mm. or say uh, na, this execution block there is a problem here then this core uh, should be able to come here and uh, take here come back here so this kind of uh, uh, flexibility in the design should be there okay so that is known as uh, sh sharing resources across cores okay so uh, once you find the fault uh, you should be able to uh, each of this core uh, 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 all the functionality is divided into small small uh, modules and each of this uh, module should be accessible to all the cores okay so that so that this entire uh, if there is a fault this entire core uh, need not be uh, no, uh, removed from the loop okay so that is the uh, right uh, now uh, no, uh, uh, all these things we uh, uh, learned some uh, theories uh, so in the last uh, few slides um, uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, about fault tolerant uh, adders okay this is uh, giving you a little more uh, uh, in sp uh, specific example of uh, how uh, fault can be detected um, and uh, eliminated uh, um, also uh, uh, probably uh, how many of you are from second semester there are students from second semester also here anybody all our uh, third semester students is it so second uh yeah okay so uh, probably uh, uh, you could uh, look at uh, these uh, 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 in this uh, field okay uh, uh, some uh, project for your uh, dissertation and uh, by by i am assuming by that by the time you all come to the final uh, semester we might have an uh, cadence and things and and i'll be able to probably uh, help you out in implementation or i could even uh, be the guide uh, if you take up some project in this domain because this appears to be a uh, bit interesting okay so let let's uh, try and uh, understand uh, what it is uh, like like you know for an uh, sum okay n bit sum okay uh, you you find out the uh, sum right uh, you are uh, doing uh, a0 to uh, an minus 1 an n bit 
data addition uh, b0 to b n minus 1 okay so uh, you get a uh, sum s0 to s n minus 1 now i want to find out whether all this addition which have been done is fault free uh, or not okay so uh, i will uh, check if this is even parity or the result is an even parity or odd parity right so uh, if i take uh, the xor of all the bits uh, can i find out if it is a even parity or odd parity right if i get you know, 0 1 if i take an xor i will find out right it is odd, odd parity similarly if there are n bits i can take an xor of all these things right can i take yes sir right okay so i i will find out the parity now uh, what is sum actually uh, it is an uh, uh, ai right x or b i c i that is the that is one sum right and and then you are taking an, an uh, 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 right an uh, uh, addition of you know, uh, all those things now uh, if i take the uh, parity of each of uh, you know, uh, p a p b p c right uh, all the a's together right all the uh, a bits parity and p bits you know, uh, all the you know, uh, uh, no, uh, p bits parity uh, and and the no, uh, carry bits separately right for i is equal to 0 and 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 then i do an xor right at the input and this is at the sum right instead of uh, that right if 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 a is an even parity if b is an uh, even parity and, and 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 the carries which are generated at each stage if, if they are you know, even parity and you take an you know, uh, xor right uh, still you will get the uh, these two parities should be uh, matching okay so uh, that way i can be sure now that okay this result okay uh, is going to be uh, <coughs> uh, right uh, it is uh, whether it is uh, uh, matching if it is matching uh, that means there it is it is a uh, error free if it is not matching that means there is an uh, error okay so so that also uh, can be uh, done uh, so uh, here it is uh, for a uh, single block it has been uh, done i have an uh, ai uh, so this is for the sum right similarly for the carry what is uh, done out here is like i have an uh, uh, abc going here this is an a uh, carry look ahead adder okay so from the carry look ahead adder i am getting an uh, carry okay so this carry will go and a uh, fast operation would happen uh, parallelly okay uh, i can generate an a uh, carry bar okay carry bar is an uh, like and of a and of an uh, ab and of ac that is if if two uh, ones are there if there are two ones okay there will be one at uh, any of these inputs and this will be one and if i put an uh, not out here so if i uh, replace this gate by an uh, this or gate by a nor gate now i will get a, a zero here if there is a carry so this carry generation is from this logic okay ca ca or a full ad, uh, what carry look ahead adder if these two datas are not complement to each other then i can say okay there is an uh, error somewhere okay uh, either uh, here or here so again you know, this is uh, some you can just uh, do that okay you can check the parity of the result and you can uh, check the parity at the uh, inputs and compare and for the carry uh, no, you need to do this so uh, so this is an, an, a paper which is i have mentioned here you could uh, go through that so uh, so this will give it uh, how to check whether the uh, no, a pair the sum and the carry of a, a full adder uh, is uh, for each full adder okay so uh, can can be detected whether it is correct or not okay uh, uh, so this is one method of doing it there are uh, several uh, topologies Sir, yeah one and last slide mm -hmm. so here uh, what uh, in case of some uh, we'll be doing like xoring of each bit with each other and then we'll find uh, yes. uh, what is the result yes and then uh, we'll do like a uh, then b complete and c com i mean yes. carry complete yes. and all of these like xor with each other yeah. yes. yes okay right. we'll do that and that is one result and then the actual sum which we get we'll do an xor of all those things Right, they have to be a uh, matching, right? So this okay. carry is from each uh, stage. Okay, this will be from different stages. This carry, right? 
So yes, first sir. is carry in the text carry. So uh, so if you haven't, the, these carries will be there from different stages. So that needs to be done. So obviously uh, additional uh, hardware will be there. Okay. So uh, this is known as an uh, 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 two pair rail checker. Okay. The, actually this rail checker has been uh, used here uh, here uh, to check whether these are uh, complement or not. Okay. Uh, so uh, what this is a uh, circuit for an uh, role uh, uh, right you given a uh, uh, two set of uh, inputs okay carry uh, this is uh, x uh, uh, x1 uh, uh, and uh, uh, x0 and y0 okay x0 and y0 and uh, this is one pair of inputs okay the second uh, pair of inputs is x1 and y1 right so uh, x0 and y0 should be complement of each other and x1 and uh, uh, y1 uh, should be complement if this condition matches then the outputs z0 and z1 will be complement of each other right if 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 x0 and y0 if they are not complement of each other or if y0 uh, uh, and then a y uh, no x0 and y0 are not complement of each other or x1, y1 are not complement of each other because of some error, then z0 and z1 will not be complement of each other. Okay. So, this essentially uh, these two circuits, okay, they will generate z0 and z1. And if you compare this z0 and z1, it should be complement of each other. Okay. Normally. So, obviously the inputs also have to be complement of each other. Okay. If it is not, that means there is an uh, uh, error. Okay. Uh, error in the uh, inputs okay either these are not complement of each other or the other two are not complement of each other okay so uh, if we get complement of each other that means everything is uh, fine here so it will uh, so this is one uh, particular uh, circuit and uh, it, it uses this particular uh, uh, two pair rail checker here two pair uh, rail checker here right this is a uh, full adder here you have another uh, full adder here Right. Uh, suppose let's uh, take a case. Let's take one specific case. Okay. Uh, zero zero. I give all zeros. Okay. Carry in zero. Okay. Uh, so uh, what happens? Right. So uh, I get a uh, some uh, carry zero here. Uh, this is going to be zero. Uh, this is going to be a zero here. Uh, sum is also going to be a zero here. Right. This is a uh, full adder. Again. Uh, you are adding these two bits but parallelly here you are assuming carry in to be 0 here you are assuming to be carry in to be 1 and now uh, the same carry is given here so this is a multiplexer uh, which is used to uh, select the uh, uh, thing right here so uh, this sum is coming here and and since this carry is 0 obviously this sum will be uh, uh, pushed here right uh, had carry been 1 this is doing a parallel so this one will be pushed here right in, in both the cases correct the correct uh, no, uh, output will be uh, available here right so this is a parallel co co uh, similarly the sum is uh, coming uh, uh, from uh, here and if a uh, carry in is an uh, 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 one out here right uh, <clears throat> in that particular uh, case right uh, 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 from uh, from here right but this carry in uh, should it be uh, triggered by some other carry in or should it be uh, controlled uh, by here uh, this sum so uh, suppose i have you know, uh, one one here so there has to be a carry in uh, yeah yeah this carry out is coming from uh, from uh, this particular case uh, 0 0 okay let's take a specific example only uh, i am putting an uh, 0 0 here so uh, there will be a 0 out here coming here right and and this carry in uh, is being controlled here so this output 0 is uh, coming out here right so i have an uh, 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 0 0 uh, output uh, uh, sum being available here right and uh, also uh, for this two uh, uh, really there are four inputs which are given right uh, one is uh, this input which is coming here uh, which is an uh, uh, zero right and and if you see here uh, what is the other input which is uh, coming uh, uh, here uh, no so this is the uh, sum input right so a uh, zero zero uh, i am giving zero zero carry in one so this what will be this sum here 
this sum will be 1, right? Because carry in, so this is coming here, this will be uh, uh, 1 out here. Whereas uh, uh, this is the sum, I am giving all zeros inputs, okay? 0, 0, right? This is no, uh, 0, 0, right? So I have a 1 coming from here because this is carry in 1. But mux is being controlled by carry in. So this 0 uh, is coming uh, towards the south. But I am giving. So this is one pair of input to the rail checker. I am giving 0 and 1. Okay, They are complement to each other. So no problem. Uh, let me see. These are the two other inputs which are uh, coming. Uh, here I am getting again. Since I am giving a uh, 0, 0 here. And the carry is here. So I generate a uh, 0 out here. So I get a, a 0 here. Okay, uh, This 0 is coming here. Now that is being uh, controlled uh, uh, by the carry signal, so sum is zero. But uh, here I need to have a uh, uh, one out here, correct? So now this I am giving a uh, uh, zero zero here, and, and I am giving a carry in is equal to one. So I have a uh, carry in coming one here. So I have this uh, uh, zero zero out here, zero zero and one. I am going to get an uh, one out here. Right, so this this uh, one is uh, available here in the XOR gate, and here I am getting a zero, so zero one. So if you see here a uh, zero one and and zero one, so uh, this will give me a uh, correct output also zero one. Right, so in case there is an uh, error uh, somewhere, okay, in this full adder or in this full adder, uh, it will uh, the complementary signals will not be available here, and I will be able to uh, detect whether the error there is an error or not so this is just for a uh, two bit addition it is shown here so this concept can be you know, uh, you know, uh, expanded uh, further okay so this is how it is uh, done in a uh, two bit adder okay so th there are uh, a lot of options available for you to do this you know, uh, simulations and and verify and probably to improve uh, these designs okay now uh, uh, this is an uh, circuit uh, uh, by another you know, okay i have given the references what they have done is, uh, this is a uh, full adder ABC, just for a single full adder they have, they have generated these two uh, functions out here, okay. Uh, this is an additional functional block which generates this particular function, okay. Uh, so, so obviously, you know, all these extra transistors in the hardware is there, uh, you are uh, generating uh, these two uh, signals, okay. And, and these two signals uh, are being used to control the uh, marks. And, and with these marks, uh, either the carry which is generated here, okay, uh, if there is no fault, it will go from here to here. And if there is a no fault in the sum, it will go from here to here. If there is a fault, then uh, uh, this signal will uh, invert the carry and it will be uh, pushed here, right. So, if you go through this paper, and they have explained the concept uh, behind this, okay. Uh, so, why I wanted to uh, cover uh, these things is those are uh, wanting to, this is an uh, interesting uh, uh, field where if you, there is a lot of uh, way you could uh, uh, improve and uh, and uh, uh, come up with new designs. Okay, uh, this is not a very, very uh, uh, old paper, okay, 2016. So, you could see uh, what you could do is, uh, what they have done is they have generated these two uh, for a single adder. They have focused on a uh, single adder. They have generated this uh, faulty signals. And, and not only that, they are able to, uh, they just placed in a, a two inverters and, and they have uh, tried to rectify the output. So, this full adder not only uh, uh, does the addition, it also detects errors and it also corrects errors, okay. So, I have talked only about adders, right. It is a basic, basic building block. But when you are uh, implementing this in uh, multipliers and all, then uh, it becomes uh, even more interesting and uh, challenging. Okay, so there are uh, several papers uh, uh, which are there. Uh, uh, you could uh, refer to that. Okay, uh, then uh, now nowadays lot of guys are uh, working on on this also fault tolerant adders with reversible gates. Okay, now uh, what is a uh, reversible uh, gate? Uh, uh, is like I have uh, two inputs A and B, right? Suppose I have an XOR gate, just an XOR gate. Okay, if I uh, take an XOR gate. Then, uh, from the output, I cannot say well, I cannot get back A and B, right? But if I have a gate um, which is giving me uh, one more redundant output, uh, which the output is again uh, A out here, uh, I can get back uh, uh, B or uh, A and B separately. Can I get back A and B separately if I have these two outputs? Can I do that? Right, uh, one more XOR with these two, I'll get back uh, B. 
right so when 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 uh, b is zero now uh, a gets uh, transmitted uh, 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 as it is and uh, when b is one uh, it gets now uh, 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 inverted okay uh, but the concept of uh, reversible uh, gates is that and uh, from the outputs uh, you can get back the uh, inputs okay so so these gates are very very uh, important this one as Feynman gate so uh, these gates are uh, important uh, in in many fault tolerant uh, designs uh, this is uh, another lot of uh, guys have uh, this is some other uh, uh, design okay uh, i think the name i have forgot from here so if you see here uh, this the uh, right this is an a uh, three input uh, with these three you know, outputs this gives these three outputs but you can uh, ma manipulate these three signals and and get back a b c and that's where the name uh, comes as reversible gates okay this is uh, a b c d and and there are uh, four outputs uh, using these four outputs you can get back a b c d okay again right uh, if there is an uh, some uh, you you can get back a b c d and you can uh, uh, verify it again with a b c d right if you, from these results if i am able to get back a b c d and i compare with a b c d then can i say these the, these results are okay i can say right right so that's the concept right so you have and you take these outputs from these outputs i compute back a b c d and compare with the initial input if if all those these answers are correct okay then that means uh, uh, if i am able to you know match this input that means this block has is error free okay so each block can be uh, checked for error free operation okay another thing is uh, uh, you don't have to actually try and uh, generate all of them some of these gates maintain parity okay uh, suppose i take an a uh, 0 0 0 0 what would be the output not all of them but 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 the, the, this gate for example it it probably uh, maintains the parity also if it is 0 0 this will be 0 uh, this will be 0 or uh, this will be 0 right and and uh, this will be uh, 0 a x or b uh, uh, yeah this will be so this is zero now just me just put one out here let's see what happens right so uh, this will be one here a x or uh, b uh, will be one correct a b x or c uh, what about this uh, this will be uh, zero right uh, what about this it's already one uh, okay zero, zero. Uh, uh, b d uh, will be uh, 0 and, and uh, b dash is 1 uh, right a x one. Uh, d 1 this will be 1 so if you see the parity is an uh, even odd right both cases correct yeah right so this block i give an input i put the output right and if the parity is matching i can say all these functions are correct correct so uh, no, this is one very very interesting area so uh, those who want to work on this maybe uh, uh, i thought uh, it could be uh, interesting so this block right it has got an inherent uh, property of checking the results okay without too much of an hardware it keeps things in a, a simple okay just do the parity check at the input and the output if the parity is matching uh, okay you could say okay the results are uh, fault free okay now using these blocks okay there are uh, several functions which have been uh, done like uh, for example uh, uh, this is the gates okay uh, these two gates they have put in right uh, a b you are getting a x or b this is c in so i get the uh, na, uh, sum out here right uh, this is a b uh, from this particular uh, uh, block because i am giving uh, 0 0 here okay this is 0 0 here so this becomes an a b and i am uh, giving it here so i am getting uh, carry out also from here right from these functions so i have used these two uh, gates and i have controlled these two inputs and then i am able to get so this is also this reference i have given here i have used these two uh, na, uh, gates and i am able to uh, na, uh, get uh, na, functions so th this you could consider as a uh, universal gate and then uh, using these gates in you know, several functions you could develop okay 
and and each of these gates na, can be uh, checked for fault free operations okay uh, is the thing uh, understood by all of you what, what has been done so this is just you know, one example of using so there are several uh, if you just uh, uh, do a google search in uh, or not a google search in in ieee explore or for, for that matter google search also uh, fault tolerant circuits you know, not not necessarily adders with reversible gates there are uh, many people who have suggested uh, various circuits multiply algebra with fault free you know, with reversible gates okay now uh, 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 the the beauty of the reversible gates are okay not all gates are you know, like that okay in this case okay uh, uh, the parity is not you know, maintained okay other gates so there uh, i have given example of uh, three uh, reversible gates okay reversible gates uh, only means that that uh, input can be regenerated okay from the output okay so that you can uh, verify it with the you know, inputs and uh, find out whether the fault is gate but there are you know, uh, better re reversible gates many gates which, which not only can you uh, get back your uh, inputs but also it maintains the parity okay and and such gates are uh, of great interest because right you don't have to uh, because uh, the checking for parity is much easier than generating the entire thing and uh, right getting uh, back okay uh, so uh, i have just uh, discussed about the uh, error uh, <coughs> detection mechanism using reversible gates but there are several papers in which error detection and error correction are also have been people have implemented multipliers uh, with you know, reversible gates with error correction mechanism also right so uh, those who are interested uh, can uh, and want to do research in this area so this is an, a good and interesting you know, uh, thing okay uh, so i have followed uh, most of the things uh, from this particular uh, book for this particular uh, lecture uh, and and a few uh, topics i have picked up from uh, some papers uh, which references i have given in the uh, slides okay so we'll uh, stop it here and and and, uh, and thanks a lot